My name is Blair Glenn, and this is Old School Woodworking. Come on in, let me show you some old school tricks. So welcome to my shop. I live up in the woods, up in the Santa Cruz Mountains. And uh, I like to think that I'm somewhat of an old school woodworker. I'm not at all opposed to power tools, and I've got some of the finest. I've got the table saws and the band saw and all the power tools. But sometimes you can get things done just as fast and oftentimes better using hand tools. And if you can learn some of these tricks using hand tools, sometimes you'll get the job done just as fast, sometimes faster, and a lot of times more accurate. So come on over to the bench and let me show you what I'm talking about. And the tool I want to talk about today is called a bench hook. In this case, I've also combined what's called a shooting board. So let's uh, come on over the bench a little closer and I'll show you how they work. Now the way a shooting board works is you've got a finely tuned jack plane. This is a, actually this is a number five right here. It's a little bit longer. And you notice that uh, the bottom edge does not have the blade going all the way to the the, the sole or to the edge of the plane and that rides on a square surface over here and because this is a 90 degree angle here and you've got a stop you can take your piece of wood and run it up to that and provided you've got a nice sharp blade you can just kiss it and it takes off just shavings very very small shavings but they come out at a right angle and they're perfectly smooth end grain is always difficult when you're working with com components for furniture and if you can finish them off as you go then uh, it's a big advantage another nice thing about this little shooting board is it's also a combination shooting board and a um, well it's a uh, this is the shooting board right here and this is called a, a bench hook and from this perspective you can do an exact measurement this, we'll call this a random size but say I want to make two of them exactly like this and you could scribe a nice clean line on there and you can take your cutoff tool your in this case this is a like a dovetail type saw it's just a little bit bigger and I cut just past that line just past and it goes quite easily so let's say we had an accurate measurement up to this point of exactly what I wanted and I've still got a little tiny bit of the line left and I can take from the same tool I take my shooting board and I come over here and I just kiss it that does two things. It smooths up the end grain, but it takes it in just very small increments right up to that line that I had laid out on my piece. And if I want to match it, I can take another piece here and I can use my component from here as a mark. And I can line it up, make sure it's dead on accurate. There's a couple ways you can do it. One good way is to put it up against the solid surface. And then you use your marking knife to very cleanly cut the same line. And once again, you come back in and you cut just over the line. So you expose the line on the outside. The saw cuts to a 90 degree angle in this, but now I've got a little tiny bit of a line. And what I can do is once again take my shooting board and I kiss it. And what that does is it allows me to take very small increments and I end up putting them up together until they line up. Actually that one's just a hair 
over. I can see the line. I cut a little bit bigger than I should have, but I could easily whittle my way up to an exact fit. Patience is a real virtue in woodworking. And there we go. I've got the two of them just perfect. Take a little bit of that fuzz off of there. The ends are real nice and smooth. And I could have two components for something that I've matched up. I've already put these two together. These are exact. This is a small representation, but let's say I was building a cabinet and I needed four square pieces that line up just perfect. And then I've got it and I'm doing it all by hand. Another aspect of this same shooting board and bench hook here is that you can use it to cut 45s. Here I've got a piece of wood that I've cut at a perfect 45 and you can use some double stick tape. Double stick tape is really valuable to have in any workshop. It's uh, carpet tape. It's double sided, comes off and it's uh, very handy for a lot of things. Here I can take my 45 that I've cut already previously and I know it's 45 and I can take it and I can put it right up to this edge here face it off in the back and press down so it's not going to move just a hair sticking over there so I'm going to get rid of that because I don't want it to hang up my piece Yeah. And here's a piece that I've roughly cut to 45, but I want to get it exactly 45. Now, I would check this first, but I'm sure I've got a 45. I pre-checked it. And I can put it up to the edge and use it with the same kind of a process I did for cutting a square 90. But in this case, I'm going to kiss off just little bits of a 45. And if I had my line scribed on here, which I should have done, I could I could kiss off right up to exactly to the 45. And it leaves a very, very smooth, very, very square surface so that I can put together some sort of a framework. It's got multiple uses, this shooting board, bench hook, square up tool, miter tool. And you can determine whatever miter angle you want by whatever kind of a block of wood. Just double check it first. Make sure that you've got a square that's exactly 45 degrees. And it's, uh, it's amazingly fast. A lot of people immediately go to their power tools and use either a table saw or a chop saw or, or some sort of a device to cut their um, their angles or, or even their squared up pieces but you've got the potential of slight um, miscalculations in the cut because you've, you've got a thicker blade on a spinning table saw or a chop saw and getting it exactly to the line is very very difficult so you can certainly rough cut them on those tools and then come back and clean them up but making very accurate measurements with a steel rule with precise lines to measure with so that every single piece comes out good and then use a marking knife which is much much thinner and leaves an incised line rather than a pencil line that you could cut up to. This very simple tool right here it's old school it's been around for hundreds of years and it's uh, it's it's truly remarkable I mean once you use it, you'll wonder how you ever got along without it. So, make a number of them in different sizes. It won't take you long at all to, to make this little tool. You can put it away, it picks up, comes out on your bench whenever you need it. Shooting board, bench hook, miter cutting, all in one.